like, you know, just before, you know, we made the final decision to go full time, you know, God gave me a word. And this was what the Lord said to me. The Lord said to me, son, you know, uh, all for your 11 years in your life, TNB was just, that's the place that I worked before. TNB was just an agent of my provision. Now I'm going to provide for you directly. You know. And that kind of, you know, I began to realize, right, listen, you know, so many times, right, we look right at our business or we look at our employer or we look at our skills, right, for our provision. Amen. Come on, church, listen, you need to work hard. Amen. You need to use your giftings. But listen, God is our provider. Amen. He owns everything, right? And that really helped me, you know, Sunday, right, that word from the Lord, right, really, just, you know, you know every doubt that I had, right, you know, uh, you know, God just took it away. Why? Just realizing that God, and, you know, for something, you know, again, right, you know, we were just even kids, right, education. And we have seen, right, you know, just that God is the owner. And sometimes God ha- allows things to happen in our life. But He is the owner. He is the creator. He is the possessor. He is the landowner. We belong to Him. We are His kids. Amen. And it's important for us to understand this. Amen. It helps us, come on church, it helps us, right, to worship Him. Amen. When we know that, you know, He is the complete possessor of everything on earth. And a complete right owner of everything. He is the one who created, right? He has a design behind every creation. Amen. And we have a purpose. Each one of us has a destiny to fulfill. Amen. It's easy, right, for us, right, even as we acknowledge, right, God is the possessor, owner of everything, for us to trust Him. Amen. You may be going to your place of work, right, and maybe, right, you know, you're expecting some not so good news. But listen, God's behind, behind all this, God's the owner, right? Amen. And it helps us to trust Him. Amen. You know, when you and I know, right, within our hearts that God is the owner. Amen. God is the possessor. He's the creator. It is easier for us, right, to ask Him for help. And you know, and so many times we ask help, you know, after we've tried everything else. And then we come to God. But listen, you know, this morning, right, I want to challenge you. Come on, God is just one word away, right, from helping us. Help! And God will help. Why? Because He's the owner. Amen. He is, right? He, 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 we need to acknowledge His ownership and we need to acknowledge His Lordship. Amen. So each one, and then in verses 3 and 4, right? You know, verses 3, you know, here is a, as the picture is, the Ark of the Covenant is being brought, right, from the home of Obed Adam. Amen. Here, right, you know, as you know, right, as they brought the Ark, amen, you know, you all know David, right, was dancing before the Lord. No? Amen. He was dancing and of course, right, you know, his uh, wife, right, got really upset, you know, dancing like a fool. He said, I will dance even more before the Lord. Amen. So it was a very rejoicing time, you know, there was music, there was happiness as the ark was coming. And who may ascend into the hill? And who may stand? And so they were going to take the ark, right, to Mount Zion, to the hill. Amen. And where, uh, the, where it was supposed to be, right? And, you know, and as we look at this, right, this morning, you know, who may ascend into the hill? And that's a question that God asks, right? You know, sometimes, right, as you read scriptures, right, God asks questions. Amen. The scriptures, right, we need to ask questions. When you look at the word of God, we need to ask, right, when you look, right, when, you, when God says the earth belongs and all fullness belongs to Him, you know, we need to ask God, God, what does this mean? How can I apply it to my life? When we see, right, who may ascend the hill of the Lord? And, of course, it's a very obvious question. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord? And of course, God doesn't stop that. God always gives us answers to our questions. Why? Because He's asking the question, and who may stand in this holy place? You know, as you look at this word, who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? And who may stand? And you know, and sometimes in life, right, it is not just, right, you know, you just go into the lift, press your number, and you are in that place. It's there's an ascending that needs to take place. You know, there are steps that each one of us needs to take place in our life now. Amen. It's not right that it happens instantaneously. You know, it's not right, you know, that, you know, when you say, right, you know, it happens instantaneously. It's a process. Come on, someone say process. Amen. Ascending hill is a process. Amen. Each one of us, we need to take note, right, you're not there standing at the bottom of the hill and suddenly you're on top of the hill. Amen. You're not some ultraman. Amen. Or something. Man, you know, man, now you are, it is a process and our Christian life is a process. Amen. And so, right, you know, what is this process? You know, and you know, for us, right, to ascend a hill, right, there are steps that we need to take, right? Every step brings us closer, amen, to where God wants. Amen. Another a psalm that has been a, a, you know, a, a scripture that has also been a blessing to me is Psalm 37, verses 23 to 24. And so this morning, right, I'm going to give you, you know, I'm, I'm this morning, right, and I'm just going to, you know, share, right, you know, psalms. You know, I'm going to look at, we're going to look at, we're looking at Psalm 24. I'm also going to throw, with, uh, throw upon you, right, other scriptures on psalms. Amen. So that each one of us this morning, right, we will see, right, you know, Psalms, the beauty of Psalms. 
And, and, and the experiences, right, that this men of God had. Na, you know, the experiences, how they poured their lives to the Lord. Na, how they couldn't understand circumstances, but they poured. And, you know, sometimes the psalm starts with, you know, something really down. You know, they gain the Lord, they're complaining about everything. Lord, how come, Lord, this is happening? How come, Lord, you know, I, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, and, you know, things are not working out. How come, Lord, listen, you know, I'm righteous, and, you know, things are not happening. The guy is unrighteous, right, and he's been blessed. You know, Lord, you know, I'm being righteous, right? And I'm struggling. And the guy's under, and listen, and then, right, you know, it ends up by saying, oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And all that is within me, bless the Lord. Amen. And it doesn't matter, right, what we go through. The most important thing in life is God. And what is the greatest commandment, everybody? Okay. Amen. Come on, you guys. When you, when you fell in love, right, what do you do, right? Love the Lord with God, with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Love the Lord. Come on. You're in love, right? Come on. Are you in love? Hello? Are you in love this morning? Amen. Amen. And how do you express your love? Right? Come on, everybody, right? Just close your eyes, right? And just express. Okay, are you ready? And, and just say, right, Lord, I want to love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and strength. Okay, everybody ready? Okay, huh? Uh, because he's the most loving person, right? Yes. Amen. He don't disappoint you, right? Yes. Amen. He's the most loving person. He died for us. Okay, everybody close your eyes la, and express this. I'll say Lord Jesus, okay? Everybody? <laughs> okay, after you go and say some other name. <laughs> okay, everybody. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. Come on, let's say it together again. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, in my strength. Okay, come on, let's put some feeling into it. Okay. Okay, come on, say this together. Lord Jesus, I love you with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. Okay. And so this is the greatest commandment. And this is our and so right for us, right? You know, each steps we need to ascend this hill. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he and, and he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And so, what is ordered of the Lord? Every step. Amen. And so, as we ascend this hill, right? Amen. As we want to experience, right, the presence of God, we want to experience God more. We want more of God in our life, right? We want to feel God. We want to see. When people see us, men, they'll say, hey, what's happened to you, right? You look so different, right? It's Jesus in me. <laughs> I'm just so in love with Jesus. Okay, amen, amen. But don't be weird. No. Be natural and be natural and spiritual. Okay, you guys, uh, be natural and spiritual, right? And I was sitting down once at a meeting. Right? I just ministered a lunchtime meeting, right? And uh, you know, over the years, right, I've just met some real, some very strange people. <laughs> And so, right, you know, we were just about to eat, right? At this lunchtime, ministered at the meeting, lunchtime, and all of the guys were there, right? And there's this guy sitting opposite me, right? And he looked really, he looked a bit strange. Right? And, you know, we were, said grace, right? We were going to eat, right? And then he looked at me across the table. Yes, sir. I've got a, I've got a specific word for you, right? and, you know, and he put, right, the man, you know, and here it was so awkward, right? Because everybody was eating, right? And he was so inappropriate. If he had a word, right, he could have done it after the meeting. Amen. So listen, you guys, be natural and be spiritual. Okay. Uh, but listen, and here, here this morning, right, the steps of a good man. And so listen, each one of us must understand our experience with God, right, are steps. It's ascending of hill, right? Steps is a process. Come on, church. Steps, you know, requires, you know, ascending a hill requires effort. Amen. We need to put some things in, right? Amen. To get our relationship with the Lord as we will look on later, right? Steps, right? You know, it doesn't happen immediately. Amen. You guys know, right? When you do steps, right? Amen. You know, right? You know, it doesn't happen. You take one step and you're not upstairs in your fifth floor. Right? Amen. You know, and steps also, right? As you look at steps, right? It may not be attractive. You know, and, you know one of the things is, you know, sometimes we, uh, we've been so busy, right? You know, I tried to do some exercise here and there. And so, right? You know, last week, I... I think for the first time I walked up the five floors, no? fifth floor, no? and of course, right, you know, and, and you know, and so I mean, just trying to introduce some exercise in our daily routine, right? Walked up the five floors. Of course, the first 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 four floors was not so bad. No? The fourth to fifth, <laughs> not fit, no? and so I need to get fit. No? 
Amen. But listen, as you walk up the stairs, right, it may not be very attractive, right, just walking up and seeing walls. As you walk up the stairs, right, it may not be, it's a process. Amen. You know, it's not, right, you know, your Christian life is not just, right, stepping into your lip, press number five and go up. Right? And then walk into Mount Zion or Mount uh, of uh, W10-5, right? you know. It doesn't happen that way, right? You know, it's a process. And so in this process, transition this morning, the steps, you know, unattractive, Amen. You know, steps, right? I don't know about you, right? But sometimes, right, walking up some of our buildings, right? You know, the musty smell, the smoking smell. You know, people, everyone smokes out there. Amen. You know, the musty smell. Amen. It can be unpleasant as well. You know, as you walk up steps, right, you know, it involves effort. And as you walk up steps, right, it involves, it's a process. And as you walk up steps, listen, there's always, right, a goal, right? Why? Because I want to reach the fifth floor at our office, right? Amen. And so, right, even as you look, right, at this whole idea, right, of ascending a hill, we are climbing a hill. Amen. And so, right, it's a process. It involves steps. Amen. And listen, every step that we take, right, the Bible says, you know, as we yield to God, is ordered by the Lord. And He delights in our way. Right? Come on, the Lord delights in our way, right? Amen. We are His kids, right? You know, when your kid takes steps, what do you do, right? Whoa. Especially at the first step, right? You know, the kid gets up, right? Everybody's watching. And then... And then everybody claps, and then, right, SMS goes out, Facebook goes out, you know, my kid walks. You know, Twitter, everybody, you know. Amen. And steps, right? Why? And the, you know, the parents look, like, oh, the guy falls down, but, you know, they're not worried about the falling down, right? They're taking some steps. Amen. So sometimes God looks at us, right? He delights in our ways. He's sure to help us. And our steps are ordered of the Lord. And so, right, you know, who shall ascend? Who shall ascend, right, Mount Zion, right? Who shall ascend, right? And who will experience even this morning, amen, right? You know, the presence of God, the manifest presence of God. Who may stand in my presence? And then, right, you know, God moves on to number, uh, verse 20. Uh, God moves on, right, to the verse 4. And verse 4 says this, right? He who has clean hands. Come on, someone say clean hands. He who has a pure heart, 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 pure heart your heart. Amen. He who has not lifted up his soul to an idol, nor sworn deceitfully. Amen. And so, right, listen, you know, if you and I, right, we've got to acknowledge, like, come on church, we've got to acknowledge, right, God is com total order, right? He is the creator. He is the possessor. He is the landowner. Everything is under his control. He is in sovereign control, right? All things work for good, right, to them that love the Lord who are called according to his service. All things. Amen. We are more than conquerors. There are things that we need to conquer, but we are more than conquerors through Christ. I can do all things through Him. Amen. It's all about Him. Amen. And how He gives us the enablement. But is it even right this morning, right? If you and I want to express, if you and I want to experience Him, listen, we need to get right, right, in our life. Right? We need to look at our life, right, all of us. And you know, when we think of this, we always think of somebody else. The person who said something. You know, this week, right, someone said something. Not from here. You guys are really nice, right? <laughs> come on, come on, look at the person next to you and say, you're really nice. You know, someone made a comment you know, that was not very pleasant. And then I said to Jesus, I complained to Jesus, Jesus, how come they say this kind of thing? Uh? And then you know, Jesus said, anyway, uh, they crucified me. Uh, so, <laughs> you, know, you know, Jesus himself, you know, the answer right, you know, was very prompt. Right? You know, how come they say things like, how come they, this person said this about me? Uh? You now, just right, walking in the bathroom, right, how come they said this about me? Right? And Jesus said to me, right, don't worry, uh, people have crucified me. Uh. Okay, yes, sir. So, you know, it doesn't matter, right, what people do. We just walk in the will of the Lord. Amen. And so, this morning, right, church, listen, we got to get right with God. And there are four areas here, amen, the scripture speaks about clean hands. Amen. This speaks about our actions. This doesn't mean, right, you know, after you go out, right, take some, some of this thing, wash your hands and walk out. You know, some what the fluid. Like. Okay. Uh, it speaks about our actions. Come on, church. It speaks about our actions. And God wants clean actions. Amen. Amen. God wants us even this morning, right, to have godly actions. You know, what we do, what we do, right, is reflected, it reflects, right, what's in us. What we do, right, is driven by what's in us. Amen. Are you understanding? Give me that understanding look, please. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Listen, you know, what we are, right, what we do, right, is a reflection of what we are inside. That's why a pure heart is really important. Amen. What we do, right, must be driven from a pure heart, now. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so, come on church, listen this morning, right? You know, we need to look at our actions, right? And we need to ask God, God, fix it, right? Are there things that we are doing that are not right? Are there things that we are doing we are not, we are, that God wants us to do which we are not doing? 
Amen. You know, and so each one of us, right, we need to come before the Lord. Right? You know, Psalm 139, the Psalm that, you know, in, earlier in the week, right, I was preparing, right? You know, Psalm 139, the last two verses says, right, Search me, O God, and know my thoughts. Try me and know. And, you know, and here, right, you know, that was the psalmist, right, crying out to God, right, to search Him, right? That was the psalmist, right, crying out to God, right, to try Him. Right? That was the psalmist, why his desire, even, right, was just to please God. His desire, right, was to come clean before the Lord. His desire in life, and our desire must be, right, just a life that is yielded and pleasing to God. Now. Amen. Because the greatest commandment is to love God with all our hearts, our soul, our minds, and our strength. He is the possessor. He is our all, right? And so He must be our priority. And so, clean hands. Uh, someone say pure heart. Now. Pure. Amen. God's looking for pure hearts. Come on, church, listen. Now. If there are issues in our life, just deal with it. Now. Amen. Deal with it, right? Deal with unforgiveness. Deal with sin. You know, the Bible says if we confess our sin, right, God will forgive us. And let's deal with it. Now. You know, so many times in life, right, you know, we just go on with life and carry baggage, excess baggage. Amen. All through our life, right? And then, right, you know, uh, you know, just before we take a few last breaths before we die, right, we confess every sin, right? I mean, listen, come on, you know, and we live, right, a life of mediocrity. We live a life, right, you know, we could have made such a great impact, right? I mean, I think the great, the most saddest thing to happen in our life, right, is when you and I go up before God and see what God had for us and how much little we accomplish. You know? Come on, every day, right, is to be lived for God. Right? Every day, right, is to impact for God. Right? Amen. And so, right, if there are issues in our life, right, let's fix it. Right? Amen.